Hey, it's Adrian, and you just got your Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, or any Samsung Galaxy phone for that matter, and these are the first things you should do to set it up to make sure you have the best experience. The first thing to check is to enable fast charging. So let's just go into settings. We're gonna type in the word fast, find fast charging, and make sure it's turned on for both when you plug the phone in and for wireless charging. Sometimes the large screen is a bit challenging to use when you just wanna be lazy in bed, but you could use one-handed mode, so double tap the home button, and you can just see the screen is much smaller. I can actually resize it and move it around and drag it. So, you know, it's just in a more natural position. Say I wanted to type something on the keyboard. Now to access that, it's quite easy. You're just gonna pull down, go to settings, search, and you're gonna type in one hand, and then when you see one-handed mode, you're just gonna scroll down and make sure you turn that on. Now, if you tap into that, you can set it up for either the button navigation or gesture use. The next change we'll wanna make sure is that we can use high quality audio, especially if you have high quality audio earphones. So pull down, long press on the Bluetooth icon and then go into details. And you could see my earbuds are connected. However, if I go into the options, the option to use LDAC or high quality audio is not turned on. So make sure you turn that on so you have the best possible audio experience if it's supported on your earbuds. And if you're old school like me and you still like to have these navigation buttons at the bottom, that's also very easy to do. We'll go into settings, search again, type in navigation, and then we'll go into navigation bar. Tap on that and make sure you select the option for buttons instead of swipe gestures. Additionally, you could tap on more options and change the order of the buttons. If you've ever had a bunch of notifications and you're just automatically swiping and you swiped away one you really needed to see, there's an easy way to get it back. So click on settings, type on search, and then we're going to type in notification and we're going to look for notification history and then tap on notification history right here and make sure that this is turned on. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow you to just scroll through and find all your notifications. And you know, it does actually group them together as well. Super handy feature. If you sometimes like to leave your phone on silent but you may miss notifications, you can get around that by going into settings, search, type in the word flash and then tap on flash notification, tap on that. And you can see there's an option here to have the camera flash and the screen also flash. And here's a demo of that. So you can see the LED light is flashing at the rear of the phone to give you an extra indication. We also customize our notifications. So we're just gonna go back into settings search and let's search for notification and we'll go into ship notification pop-up style, go into notification pop-up style. And then you see we have an option for brief or detail and keep it on brief. Then you can click on edge lighting and you can see we can have a bunch of effects. Right now it's set to spotlight, but you can change it to something like say fireworks. We're gonna have the frame. And then you can also change it to your favorite color. And of course you can change your new, the transparency, how long it appears and how large it is. If you get a lot of notifications, you may want to see more than three notifications. So we'll just go and do the same thing. We'll type in the word notification, go into notifications, then go into advanced settings. And instead of showing the three most recent notifications, we can show all notifications. While you're in here, you can also turn on the option to show the app icon in the notification so you know exactly which app it's from. If you're like me and you like to just quickly double tap the power button to launch a camera, it's really easy to do that. So what we're gonna do is pull down and go into settings, go into the magnifying glass, and we're gonna type in the word double. And then when we see double press, we're gonna tap on that. So a double press of the power button can quick launch the camera, can quick launch Samsung wallet, or it can actually open up any app of your choosing that you have. And then when you press and hold the power button down instead of double tapping it, you can have the power off menu if you don't use Bixby. By the way, if you're finding this video helpful, please consider liking and subscribing. It really does help me out, but let's get back to it. If you wanna prolong your battery life, you should consider using dark mode. So just go into settings display, switch it from light to dark, and then change the motion smoothness to standard. You can also consider going into connections, turning off ultra wideband, going into more connection settings, and turning off nearby device scanning. If you want to prolong the health of your phone's battery for as long as possible, go into settings, search, and we're gonna type in the word protection, and then we're gonna scroll until we see battery protection. Once you go into there, turn battery protection on. Now there's three options, basic, adaptive, and maximum. If you set it to maximum, this is gonna keep your battery as healthy as possible. It won't charge past 80%. You can also set it to adaptive where it'll learn, or you can just have it set to basic, where once it gets to 100%, it's gonna to drop to 95, then charge back up. I also love the ability to just double tap the screen to turn it on or off, instead of just using the power button. Now to do that, you'll just pull down, go into settings, 
search and you're just going to type in the word double and then you can see it says double tap to turn off screen double tap to turn on screen you could do it right from here you could jump into the full options and turn it on there you also have the option to lift to wake so the phone screen will just turn on anytime you pick it up so if you like using the etch panel or you don't like it there's an easy way to do that we'll just go into settings again search type in edge and then when you find edge panels you can go ahead and turn this option on or off to keep your phone safe from malicious apps go ahead tap on settings go to search and type in the word auto scroll down until you see the option for auto blocker right here and then what you're going to do is to tap into that and make sure it's on and what this is going to do is only allow apps to be installed from authorized sources so if you ever use third-party apk files make sure you turn this off because you're going to have a problem it's also going to make sure that apps are scanned for malicious activity when they're installed and it's also going to prevent you know commands by usb cable if you plugged it in say at an airport or somewhere to just charge it if you ever need to wirelessly charge a device you can just type in the word wireless and then we'll find wireless power sharing and then just turn that on. Then you could place any compatible device on the back of your phone. If you're bored of the wallpapers that come with the phone, it's easy to generate unique ones. So just go into settings, scroll down to wallpaper and style, tap on change wallpapers and scroll down into creative. And from here, you can see these are just AI generated ones like this one. And it shows you the prompt that was used and you can generate multiple versions. If you want a bit more screen real estate, it's easy to do that. Swipe down, go into settings tap on home screen and go ahead and change the home screen grid to you know four by five or five by six and you can see you have way more options when you set it like this of course you can also change the apps screen grid as well and the folder grid and if you sometimes find that your app icons have moved around you could go ahead and enable the option to lock the home screen layout another handy option is to just swipe down anywhere on the screen for the notification panel so instead of swiping down from the top you could just swipe down right from the bottom here and it'll do the same thing if you like a perfectly black screen on your always on display we can easily enable that so just pull down from the top click on settings and scroll down until you see lock screen in aod Tap on AOD or always on display and enable the option or disable the option for show lock screen wallpaper. And now you'll have a perfectly black screen. You can also set when you're always on display show. So I like to always see it on, or you can have it to tap to show or during schedules or only when you have notifications. If you take a lot of photos and you share them online, but you value your privacy, go ahead and type in location and go to location tags under camera settings and make sure you turn this option to add tags to your pictures and videos so you can see where they were taken because this will include your location information that other people can access if you want to avoid mistakenly sending content to contacts what you can do is go into search and then type in the word contacts and then scroll down until you see show contacts when sharing content tap into that and you could see we have the option here to disable showing contacts when sharing content. While Samsung gives us access to a secure folder, you may forget to move important files there. So go into settings, search, type in the word enhanced, and then type on enhanced data protection, tap on it right there. And then you could see you have the option to actually encrypt backup data. If you're not gonna be near a battery charger or plug anytime soon, what you can do is go into settings, search, and then type in performance, and then go into performance profile and change it from standard to light where it's going to prioritize battery life and cooling efficiency just remember to switch it back to standard whenever you can charge your phone back up if you find these screens still too bright even when you reduce the brightness all the way down it's easy to fix that just type in the word dim and then scroll down until you see this option for extra dim and what you could do is enable this option and what it's gonna do is to really dim the display considerably, which is really useful when looking at it at night. If you're excited to use the AI features, but you want it done locally on the phone, we can go into settings, search, type in the word device, and then scroll down till you see it's a process data only on device, tap into that, and you can see we have the option there for added privacy. If you sometimes have problems sharing photos and videos on certain apps or websites, go ahead and launch into the camera, go into the camera settings, scroll down into advanced picture options and make sure to turn off high efficiency pictures and then scroll down into advanced video options and make sure to set it to H.264 
instead of high efficiency. So let me know what you guys think of these tips. Were there any tips that you learned for the first time or did you already know a lot of these or do you have any tips that I may have missed that other people could benefit from? Just leave it in the comments down below. Also, don't forget to check out some of my other videos on Samsung tips and tricks. I'm going to leave that linked up here. And of course, it would really mean a lot to me if you could like and subscribe. It truly does help out small channels like mine and I'll see you in the next one soon.